Welcome to Thursday, August 25th, 2022. Your day with a podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Go to CowboyStateDaily.com. Check out their original Wyoming news content, more original news content for Wyoming than any other news source in Wyoming. Go to CowboyStateDaily.com. As we take a look at the end of the week here, peering into the weekend, it's really more of the same. However, I do want to talk about the risk of some severe thunderstorms today. This is going to be true for northeastern Wyoming, parts of western South Dakota, and northwest areas of Nebraska. We'll kind of focus in and show you where those areas of possible severe storms could be today. It's already been the last couple of days getting more active, especially in Wyoming, for thunderstorm activity, especially western Wyoming, and some of that moisture We'll work with a bit of a weak front to produce some severe weather. Temperatures, for the most part, are going to stay steady. No big ups, no big downs, no big changes into early next week. We're just going through the motions. want to talk a little bit about August precipitation for some parts of the region and how it's gone so far. Satellite photo tells quite a good story, really. We've got the subtropical moisture getting further east now. This area of blue that you see up here, into the Pacific Northwest, Northwest Montana, uh, the panhandle of Idaho here. This is a little bit of an upper level trough and a little bit of a cool front with it. Behind the cool front, you see the orange here? The air is drier, but we do have this enhanced area of moisture that's along and near the Continental Divide. This system here, combined with daytime heating and the subtropical moisture, is what's going to put together that risk of severe weather today. So here you can see that upper level low. There's a little wave right here. See that little tiny wave right here? This was responsible for a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity late yesterday and last night over eastern Idaho and parts of western Wyoming and far northern Utah into southwest Montana and will play a role in the potential for severe weather today. And here is that subtropical moisture plume showing up as the precipitable water forecast. We have this pocket of dry, stable air kind of stuck over Kansas and eastern Colorado and Oklahoma while that moisture hangs along the Gulf Coast and will stay along the Gulf Coast where it will continue to stay wet. As we go forward though, We'll show you what happens over time. So this is today, this is tomorrow, this is Saturday. Notice dry air getting punched in. And as we go through the weekend, we're gonna see a pattern where the air after Friday gets a little more stable and dry. And notice here, notice how there's not as much blue. It doesn't mean the monsoon's done in the Southwestern United States, but it's at its, it's basically going through its life cycle and it's now at the end of its life cycle getting closer to where we just see less of it. Doesn't mean it's over because there's still more to come, but we're on the tail end of the monsoon season. This is by Sunday. By Sunday, the one of the troughs in the Pacific Northwest is moving through the Dakotas here, and that's what's dragging in that drier air mass that you're seeing right there. The brown that you can see going across parts of Wyoming and Colorado back into the southwestern United States. So that's going to drag in some slightly cooler air and slightly drier air for the middle to the end of the weekend. And then we kind of go back to high pressure for a good part of next week. And there you can see Sunday, the drier air gets more extensive. Here's that better moisture up in the Dakotas with that low. And then we'll have some showers and thunderstorms from Texas through Oklahoma through the Corn Belt. Some severe weather possible into those areas as well. If you look at the precipitation forecast through Sunday, you can see where all the action's going to be. Quite a bit here in South Dakota, northeastern Wyoming, southeast Montana. You can see the monsoonal moisture continuing to bring showers and thunderstorms to this area here. Along the Gulf Coast of Texas, more rain coming. Notice there's a little bit of a dry hole right here, and that's because of that dry air mass, that drier, more stable air mass that's stuck into those areas. Now let's talk about the severe weather threat today. The Storm Prediction Center has highlighted two areas in the region where there could be severe weather. Northwest and north central Montana and around that Great Falls Cut Bank area. Then the I-90 corridor from Sheridan to Buffalo to Gillette to Sundance into the Rapid City area down to Shattering Alliance over down into Niobrara County, Lusk to northeast of Casper, Newcastle area. That area has just got the right setup. Good daytime heating, good moisture. That little wiggle I showed you on that one map that's going to be coming on through that area today. So there is going to be risk of severe weather. The lighter shade of green is where the general thunderstorm activity will be today. This is the hail risk. Now the hail risk shows only 5%, but I will tell you the way they, they do these things. 
that's a pretty good risk that there's going to be hail with these thunderstorms. And look at this. There's even a risk of tornadoes. Now, we haven't shown you this very much this summer because we really have had very little, knock on wood, don't want to jinx anything, but we've had very little tornado activity this season so far in this part of the country. But there is some risk of that today, believe it or not, with some of those thunderstorms. So keep your eyes to the skies there. And speaking of tornadoes for the season so far, this is where we're at to date. 876 reported tornadoes across the United States. We're looking at that being far below the maximum. We're seeing that far below the averages. This pink line here is the minimum amount of tornadoes being reported. And if you look at that minimum, it's only 944. We have had a very quiet tornado season, thankfully. That's good news. But this goes counter to what some people say about extreme weather in these situations. We have had a lesser than average tornado season. Let's hope that continues. Although some tropical storms and hurricanes later in the season can make that number get higher. Now I want to talk a little bit about August precipitation. This is for the last 30 days. So this includes the last week of July. This is basically the haves and the have nots. But look at the green and blue areas for the month of August to date. And you can see the areas that have benefited from precipitation. Now, some of you might be saying, not in my backyard. This is especially in the Cheyenne area. That's actually a negative 0.23 below average. The Cheyenne has missed out on a lot of the rain that's been encircling the capital city of Wyoming. But look at the front range in the mountains of Colorado, even out into the plains. And we have this dry patch, which has just continued for Scotts Bluff and Kimball and Sydney back into North Platte and Ogallala. Then we've got this other dry patch up here. But look at northern and western areas of Wyoming, eastern Utah, eastern areas of Idaho, up into Yellowstone National Park. Some beneficial rain. And speaking of Yellowstone Park, look at this. Month to date at Lake Yellowstone, two and a half inches, an inch and a half above average. They got a good rain yesterday. And then if you look at Grable, Grable, 1.15, that's a whole inch above average. Casper has had a better month, 1.7, that's over an inch above average. But look at Cheyenne, only 0.62, that's below average, continues to be drier than normal by almost four and a half inches for the year to date. Only seven inches of moisture in Cheyenne. So it's really the haves and have nots. Speaking of the have nots, look at Scott's Bluff. Scott's Bluff only 0.04 inches for the month of August, and they're also four and a half inches behind average. This is the way the monsoons go. You get these islands of wet and these islands of dryness. Going out further along in the forecast, this is by next, towards next Tuesday and Wednesday. Notice the high pressure building back into the west. So we have another period of warmer conditions, a few afternoon and evening thunderstorms around. What I want to show you is this guy right here. This wave that's up into the Gulf of Alaska by the second half of Labor Day weekend is probably going to send a cold front our way. And this is something we'll talk more in detail early next week because I know a lot of you are making your plans for Labor Day weekend. I don't see anything through the start of Labor Day weekend, but we need to keep an eye on this guy to see if it ends up becoming a weather maker or not. Have yourself a great Thursday. See you tomorrow.